And a quick check for ASAP. ASAP, Kristen, one, two, three. Check, check.
Hey folks, once again, if you're just joining us, uh, please turn off your cell phones, no video, no flash. Uh, we'll start with a statement from Coach Thompson and then open it up for questions for the student athletes. Uh, tough one tonight. I thought we played an unbelievable game. Uh, a lot of engagement, uh, a lot of fun. I just thought uh, our guys just really battled against arguably 2019's best starting pitcher in college baseball and really worked the pitch count. Of course, Edward Julian had the first uh, big swing and then had the, uh, I guess, the third run on an RBI. Um, but I, I think you would have to give a lot of credit to Rankin Woolley. I know he got on before him. Um, the home run and the, the RBI is what you notice, but Woolley got on both times right in front of him. Um, I, I thought Coach Smith did an amazing job with our, our pitching staff and just knowing where we're at and coming out of the Super Regional on where our guys' um, pitch counts were at. Watched them close this week, and of course we devised a different plan today to piece it together, and I thought everybody really competed within the strike zone. Uh, for the most part, and uh, for eight and two thirds, I just thought everybody associated did a nice job, and then you know, had a chance to win the baseball game. I don't think there's any doubt about that, and just uh, one play away tonight. Okay, uh, we'll open up for questions for the student athletes. Uh, ask to be identified. Give us your name, your affiliation, and to whom you're asking the question. And we'll get a mic to you for the first question. Okay, back over here. There it is. Theo Durosa, Omaha World Herald. Guys, I wanted to ask about Rod Bramblett and how his loss has affected this team and how you guys are handling that and how you're approaching this World Series without him. Jack Stark, please. Um, Rod was a big part of who we are as a university and uh, as a baseball team especially. Um, he was nothing but kind to all of us all the time. He was always supporting us, so... Losing him was obviously terrible, but you know, I know he's with us and he's been watching over us as we've gone along this journey right here in the postseason. And uh, I know he's proud of us either way. Richard, um, kind of going off of Jack, everybody was very devastated about it. We all met with Coach Thompson, and uh, he was basically just making sure that we were okay with it. And uh, in this time, everybody's kind of been uplifting of everybody, and everybody, the whole Auburn family has just grown even closer together than they were before, and that's just awesome under tragic circumstances. So. Okay, next question, please. Let me down, Kendall. Kendra Rogers, D1 Baseball. Uh, Jack, just kind of talk about your performance. You kept those guys in check for the most part. And just as a as a guy who stepped up tonight and, and as, as a starter, just kind of talk about moving forward now after a tough loss like that. Um, you could look at it from a couple different ways. Uh, they hit some balls hard right at people. Uh, they're, they're obviously a very good offensive ball club. But I think going into that sixth inning, I put us in a bad position early and forces go to our pen early when we're already a little bit more shallow than maybe some of the other teams here. So you could, you know, say we could have won that game, whatever, but I think that sixth inning I kind of let go for me a little bit, and that affected the rest of the ball game in terms of pitching also. So uh, we're going to have to come back and do a good job on what, Tuesday, say Sunday, Tuesday? Come back and do a good job on Tuesday and uh, keep going as long way from over the Okay, any more questions for the student athletes? If not, guys, or group, we'll see you on Tuesday. Thank you. Okay, we'll start here with Kendall on questions for Butch. Roger, D1 baseball. Butch, obviously, you had a chance to close out that game, but just as you look to the ninth, you're facing Mangum and McNamee, and you've got plenty of experience with those guys, but how tough is it just facing those guys in, in that situation? It's a great lineup. I think I'm documented as saying I thought Vanderbilt, Mississippi State's the two best teams we had seen prior to getting here, and then, of course, they're both in our bracket. I, again, I just reiterate, we had a couple of things that uh, we really wanted to do to try to keep this game intact, and I think we did it. And I think we gave ourselves a, ball, a chance in the ball game. One thing that they did that we, we didn't do as good of a job of, but 
Julian's home run changed that, and Julian's third run changed that, and why I'm making such a big deal out of that is uh, I wanted to put the ball in play at the same rate that they did. And, of course, the first five guys we had struck out, and it didn't happen. But Wally found a way on with uh, two outs in the infield, and Julian had the big swing. And so that, that continued. And, again, at the end of the day, when I look at it, I knew that that would be paramount. But, again, I thought we could have – you know, dominated a routine play and uh, finished it off. But uh, we only struck them out three times at the end of the night. And uh, I do have a ton of respect for, for their offense and to hang in there. And uh, they were able to just put the ball in play to extend the innings when it, when it mattered most in the, in the game. Mike. Uh, Mike Lepresti, NCAA.com. Bush, baseball is a game that is always demanding – you to overcome adversity and tough nights and move on. But how tough will this be? And what do you need to say to them in the next 24 to 36 hours to get them ready to play? Again? Tell them to turn in their loops, their laundry. Tell them when we're going to have breakfast, uh, when we're going to practice, what we're going to do tomorrow. Um, we've been through a ton if you've watched our ball club. So these guys, I just I, I know a man by man and kind of what makes them go. and. Um, and we'll be back. This this team has really grown a lot. That Mississippi State ball ball club that we just played, they haven't changed. They've been a very steady, uh, great ball club all year. But we're changed and we're better. And uh, we've been through a ton. And so I don't I don't think much uh, shocks us. But I, I, of course we're hurt. I'm hurt because we invested so much and thought we had a good plan. Uh, but at the same time, um, who knows what'll happen Tuesday? Uh, we went for it, I, but I guarantee it won't be because of having to pick them back up and get them to compete again. That's the standard in our, in our deal that I'm really comfortable with with our, with our ball club, that they do a great job with that. I think it would be more about the execution and how much pitching we have. That might be a bigger story because we went for it. We, we came to win, and we went for it tonight. Okay, any more questions for Butch? You will be the home team on Tuesday. Yeah. You won that flip. Anything else? Okay, thanks. Appreciate you. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Once again, if you're just in, please turn off your cell phones. No flash, no video. Chris, give us an overview, please. That's just how we drew it up in the scouting report before the game. Is uh, give them a lead and then try to catch them. Um, I thought Auburn did a great job. Then they had some big two-out hits. Edward Julian, I mean, that's one of the farthest home runs I think in this ballpark, and and nobody's hit that pitch off Ethan all year. And then uh, I give our guys credit. We uh, fought to the last out. <clears throat> and just kept competing, and it's something we've talked about all year. It's a little bit of a frustrating night because we had a couple opportunities to drive in some runs, and we didn't. But at the very end, just the, the grit of our ball club played out, and we were able to put some balls in play. Okay, we'll open it up for questions for student-athletes. You know the drill, so 
If you want a question, if you have a question, we'll uh, get a mic to you. And Rick, we'll start with you. Rick Cleveland, uh, Mississippi Today. Marshall, can you just talk about the last at bat? Um, uh, well, I went up there, and first of all, I was in awe by everybody that was able to get the job done before me. It was incredible the fact that we could get to that point to where I was coming up to the plate. And, uh, you know, all that bats prior to that, I had kind of been a little off, missed some pitches. And I just kept getting encouragement from my teammates saying, keep going, keep going, don't quit. And then my last at bat going up there, I kind of didn't even, I knew uh, he was going to have a good fastball. I knew that they were going to keep him in the game and save it for me because I had struggled with Velo against Green Hill before. So I was just looking to get the job done, get on top and stay short, like something I've been doing all, uh, all year. Okay. Yep. Back here. David Murray, Gene Space, twenty-four-seven. Elijah, uh, just going attacking that first pitch, dropping that ball down the line. Uh, you, you had seen what Jake had done. Did you feel like you could just come after that guy immediately? Um, I do believe he he went one zero first, but um, you know, I know he was just throwing a lot of heaters, so I stayed aggressive. Um, you know, I wasn't doing well at bats previously, so I just kept you know, it's baseball, so I stayed with it. Um, I know that he um, was looking for, you know, pitches around the zone, so I continued to um, be aggressive and said, put this ball in play, stay on top, do anything I can to help this team win. We're on deadline here. <laughs> Kendall. Kendall Rogers, D1 Baseball, just for Elijah. As Jake kind of let out that inning with that double, did you guys kind of sense like, hey, man, same old story, here we go? I remember actually being in right field for defense and Cole was pitching. And after he got the second strikeout, I said, I have the weirdest feeling about this inning. And so when Jake went up there and hit that double, I said, well, here we go. Um, you know, Coach Lim said when we got that first dude on, it was a little, um, you know, relief. Even though we were still down, it felt like there was a little confidence seeing our leadoff man get on. Um, he's the best leadoff in the nation. So when we got the energy from him, it started to flow through the team. And, you know, it came out at the end. David, once again. Cole, uh, your attitude, you come in there, it's not even a save situation, but was it just a matter of just hold it down and give your offense a chance in the last inning? Yeah, you know, uh, no matter the situation, if you give our offense one more chance to swing the bats and keep it close, um, that's what they can do. That's what they're capable of. Uh, watch them do it all year. Um, and I'm just excited. It's, it's a comfort knowing as a pitcher, if you can just hold it where it is, our offense is going to give us a chance. They've given us a chance every game this year. Um, kind of same thing as Mac too. I uh, going into that last inning, I knew if I kept it there, I just had the same feeling as Florida State a couple last year, and just like, man, our offense can do this. Like we're never out of a game, despite the situation, the inning, how many outs. Uh, that's what having a good offense can do for your ball club. Okay, Mike. This is Michael Presti, InstillRelay.com. For all of you, every team wants to be gritty, but, but when you actually do it, time and again and again, where's that come from? Marshall, you start, please. Um, I'd say that it comes from day one that we started. It was, I'll throw it back to the conditioning test when we all showed up. And, you know, everybody had to pass it in order to get to practice and be able to work with everybody. Mm -hmm. And I said from day one, it's kind of the point where you just can't count us out. There's never a point where somebody's not locked in or somebody's not bought into what we got going on. And I think that in order for us to have that kind of grit, it takes everybody, including people that maybe don't get the start, but at some point they're going to have to come in and make that play and just you know having the trust that somebody's going to go out there and give everything that they have and is bought into what we're doing. Believing in one another. Um, the bond we have is something that's hard to break. So believing in one another and going out there and leaving it out there on your team, it pays off in the end. Um, and, you know, we work pitch to the last. You're never out of a ball game, and we all know that. So when we all believe in each other, you know, good things happen. Yeah, you know, I, I think it comes down to how much we love each other. Um, you can see it when we're on the field. You can see it when we're off the field. Um, we love to be around each other. And if we don't have that, if we don't have that connection with each other, then we'll get selfish. Um, then we don't have confidence in the next guy coming up. I mean, you watch Rowdy get walked there, and we still knew that they were going to get the job done behind them. Um, so I think it's just having that relationship with all these guys that we've built over all this time we spent together. Um, it's truly a family. It's truly a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that you don't get anywhere else. You don't get to see these guys every day. 
Um, so that's, I think that's what it is. It comes down to how much we love each other as a family. Okay, well, this, David, will be the last question for this group, David. Thank you. For both uh, Marshall and Elijah, even though Owen was doing so well, did you feel like if you just get an Auburn's bullpen after the way y'all played against them in Starkville, did you think that you could make something happen eventually, just keep grinding away and something would crack? Marshall. Yeah, you know, uh, that's kind of our philosophy is grind out the starter, get to the pen, so that way they have to change something up and somebody new has to come in. And I think it just has to do with the fact that we just stay the course and we never veer off of what we're trying to do. And if we are, then we help kind of bring it back together and we go back and kind of reset. And I think that as far as Jack Owen, he pitched a great game. Um, he did a hell of a job. Next thing is just the fact that we're able to go out there every single day with the same approach and just trust that the guy after you is going to be able to get the job done. Hats off to Jack Owen. Um, he went out there and did what he was supposed to for his team. But, you know, we kept grinding, and we were trying to get in that bullpen, like you said, and eventually when we got in that bullpen, there was that you know disbelief knowing that he's not out there anymore because he had three pitches working for him. So, um, you know, when he came out of the game, a little – you know, relief came, a little weight off our shoulders for sure. <coughs> Guys, thank you. Get ready for Tuesday. Tuesday night, we'll see you. Thank you. Yep. Uh, you will be the home team Tuesday night. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Okay, Kendall, start us, please. Baseball, Chris, you've seen many magical moments with this team throughout the year, but as you're kind of sitting back and watch that ninth inning unfold, what's what's kind of going through your mind? You know, our our, our message in the dugout was just get it to the next guy, get it to the next guy. And, and it ha you know, Tanner Allen had a big at-bat with, you know, just a walk, and Josh Hatcher uh, gets the chop ball there. I mean, you just have so many things of guys just competing. And, and Jay Gotro has done such an unbelievable job with our offense this year of instilling just a grinder mentality and, and wearing people out and putting balls in play. And we were a little frustrated tonight. I mean, it really wasn't typical of us for the first so many innings. And you can tip your hat to, to their pitching for that. But um, in that ninth inning, that was us. That's what we do. OK, David. Coach, I believe uh, Burns, that was his first relief appearance, and there had been some talk that Auburn wouldn't even try to use him today. But when he went in, did you think this is a chance to get to this guy after what you all seen of him in Starkville? Well, we kind of knew he'd be available today, just the way they've been using him and, and listening to everything. We even watched video of him knowing they might use him. I mean, he's – Tanner Burns is one of the best arms in the country. I mean, that, that he is – he's a great pitcher. But – and I was just talking to Cole Gordon, you know, pitching the ninth is just different than any other thing. And – you know, Cole Gordon, when, you know, when I pitch him in the seventh, he's not real good. I pitch him in the ninth, he's real good. Um, so it's just it's sometimes a mindset with pitchers and where they're at. And we were fortunate in our game in Starkville, we got the Tanner in that first inning he pitched. Then he settled down and really pitched good against us, but we were able to get to him that first time through. Okay, Rick. Chris, you said that, that uh, nobody's hit that pitch, Ethan Smalls. I, I'm, I'm assuming it was a high fastball. It's a high fastball. It's elevated fastball, and and man, he just turned and lifted it with two strikes. You're you you think you'd be protecting against some off speed, but uh, he turned on that ball and he hit it a ton. So, um, he, that, Edward, he's one of the best hitters in the country. I, we said it after our weekend in Starkville, um, and and then the changeup he hit to center field to drive in the run. After that was was another great at bat. Yeah. Did you have? Oh no. Okay. I thought you were. I thought you were signaling. You're ecstatic with winning and everything. Do you ever, as a, in a game like this, feel for that third baseman? I mean, they. We do. That, I mean, you do. That's the first thing we said when we came off the field. Not just the third baseman, just the other dugout. You know, this is such a highs and lows of this game, and um, you know, you have you know plays happen, and um, but I mean. That, that their coaching staff is as good a coaching staff as you'll find. And, um, you know, you feel for, you know, other coaches as they go through it, as excited as we are. Um, but we've been on the other side too, and I think everybody at some point in our game has to fight through that piece. Um, it, it happens to all of us. I know it's really quick after the game, but if it, now that you know the matchup for Tuesday, do you know who you plan to throw? We'll probably know tomorrow. i got to talk to my pitching coach and um, see, but we'll we'll try to look at it and – I think we have a little bit of an idea, but we'll know for sure by the time probably we get to practice tomorrow. I'm sure that'll be the first question. 
Okay, any more questions for Chris? Okay. Thank y'all. Hell Thanks, State. Guy. Yep. Thank you. See you, Dave.